Agile Sax is number 19 in the 60 for Sax book. It is a 6-8 piece, it's roughly 100 beats per minute, and when we say beats, of course, we mean dot of crotchets. So one and a two and a one and a two and a. So first I'll just play it, and then I'll talk about ways that we can break it down to make it a little bit simpler to play. <laughs> So being a 6-8 piece, we are supposed to be doing two beats to a bar because a conductor is not going to swing their arm six times in a bar. So yes, 6-8 is six quavers to a bar, but the conductor is not going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So they're just going to go one, two. So for us as the musicians, we too are trying to get this idea of compound duple, two groups of three per the bar. So one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, one, two, three, or more meaningfully, because we've got two beats to the bar, one and a two and a. But if you're just starting out with a six eight piece, it's very difficult to just throw yourself into a, a two beats to bar situation. Sometimes it's easier just to spot the individual quavers. So at the begin, beginning of the piece, we have a crotchet and some quavers. So the crotchet, of course, comprises of two quavers. So we want to be thinking, so if we pulse it out, it'll sound like this. So that's a little bit forced, but at least help with the counting. Um, eventually you can get a little bit faster. And we're still kind of hitting these sixes. But they're quite fast now, so eventually you want to drop some of them out. And then you're left with just your dot of crotchets. Da 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 da. Um, in terms of fingering, okay, we have a B flat. A G to B flat is quite difficult to coordinate, and there's three ways to play B flat, but Rather than try and explain the merits of all of them, for this piece I just highly recommend just using two fingers and a side key. You'll probably have to practice the transition because we're involving two hands here. So it's, it takes a little bit of getting used to, especially because we're jumping around across the break. So it's just a matter of getting your fingers used to going where they need to go. And then you can get the speed up. Alright, so a dot of crotchet just showed up. Oh, there's one earlier on. So again, we can kind of we've got to try and imagine our three quavers inside that. Da 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 da. One and a two or one, two, three, one. So we've got a whole bunch of these groups of threes. The, this, um, so in theory they call this compound duple. Um, so duple meaning two, the compound being the groups of three. So later on when you get nine eight and twelve eight, you get your compound triple and your compound quadruple. Uh, keeps on going. Again, shows you that the psyche B flat's a good idea. <laughs> So there's a risk of mistiming the dot of crotchets. Da 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 da. Uh, 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 uh. Rest, rest after that. Okay. The other thing of note is this piece is quite smooth. Um, generally, uh, a lot of the pieces are tongued. You always want to get your tongue. Mo most pieces are predominantly tongued. Like 90% of the time, surely, the tongue is always doing something. This piece has a lot of slurs. Uh, you're only really ever tonguing the beginning of the bar. Two, two. So if you really want to get 
this piece getting more next level, you want to try and get these four bar phrases, and you're only tonguing four times because you've got four four slurs. Ta da 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 ta da 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 ta da 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 ta. So there's only four of them. Um, and the last line, last four bars. <laughs> So the last one's quite a good one. We've got this octave jump. All we have to do is move our pivot our, our register key here. So with the thumb movement, just remember when you're jumping across a break, your thumb, all it has to do is pivot. You don't have to be picking up and placing. It's it's a very minimalist movement. So you just pivot. And with these jumps, now, you don't have to hold back. They, these high notes require a little bit more air, faster air, just let it rip. So hopefully that goes some way to help explaining how to play Agile Sax.